Hi, welcome to Shikhan.com. In today's video, we will learn how we can do calculations in MS Excel. In the last video, we have learned how to arrange and design our rows and columns. In the last two videos, we have learned about arranging and designing our columns. If you haven't seen them yet, please go and check it out first. So today we will learn how to use Excel to do basic calculations in a table. So before starting our calculations, let us first know some basic rules for doing calculations in MS Excel. Before doing any type of calculations, as per the rule of Excel, every time we have to use an equal. After using equal, if we give a number for example, 20 plus 30 and press enter, then we will see according to the function it becomes 50. And if we see the function above, we can see that the function is equals 20 plus 30. So if we press enter after doing this, then the answer comes 50. So this is one type of formula. The second one is, we can bring two boxes in one format. For example, let's write 100 in one box. And in the next one, write 200. Let's delete this formula. Now, we would want to apply a formula in these two boxes to get our total. Now, as we have already learned how to name and mark our certain boxes, so we can say that this box is D11 and this box is C11. So now we will write equal C11 plus when we write C11 in this box, we can see that C11 cell is already selected plus D11. Now we see both our cells have been selected. Now press enter. Here we can see that it has already become 300. So the difference between the last one and this one is, previously we were using numbers. For example, we wrote equal 20 plus 30. In that case, if the value of these boxes change, this box will not change. Like, by mistake, if we write 100 here, then just by changing the number to 300 in this box, automatically the sum changes to 500 in the final box. So, if we just use number, we will notice that if we write any other number in any other box, then this box, our final box, will not change its value in any way. In that case, we can do one thing. Using the equal formula, we can add another box name in our original formula. Now, if we want to use two or more boxes in our original formula, like let's write 200 here, and in the end we can see it's not changing, which is because we have only connected C11 and D11. So, if we were to connect this 200 as well, then we'll go to functions, double click, and then we will write B11 plus enter. Then we can see the final number has changed to 700. So, this was the second type of formula where we can add numbers. After that, when we will work on it, like if you see in this data sheet, like this, we can have 20, 30 or hundreds of rows. Now, if we want to connect 200 rows here, then our formula will become a bit lengthy. But we do not need to worry. We have yet another formula in Excel for this, our third formula. Now, for doing the same work, we have to use a certain function called sum number. So now, if we want to know from Mohammed Alamin how much we have taken in 3 months, then we'll click on balance. After clicking on balance, we write equal. Then we write the function name that is sum sum. When we write sum, we will see a lot of functions coming below. We can see that all these are in order. After writing sum, we will give a bracket here. Here, we will write the name of the first box, that is B5. So we write B5 plus C5 plus D5. Now we will close the bracket and press enter. Right after pressing enter, we can see the three rows present here or the three columns here. The data in these three columns are added in this balance column. Now think that in February, instead of 40,000, we want to change it to 60,000. After pressing enter, we can see that automatically the balance has changed to 1,90,000. Now to make this work even more simple, we can choose one option from the menu bar in Excel. Let's select a blank space or delete this formula. After deleting it, if we select it here and go to the top right side and select auto sum. After clicking this function, 
then we will see that a function b5 dash d5 is written here. Now let's press enter. Now we can see we get the same result. So here we are trying to shorten the column further. Previously we were using plus. So now if we don't want to use plus to add all these columns, we would just need to take the first and the last column. So what we are going to do is write the name of the first box that is here. Then we give a hyphen mark. Then we are going to write the last field that is present in here. Then we give a bracket and press enter. After doing this, we can see that we get the same result. Therefore, for summing up, we learnt three new ways. Firstly, we can add the numbers manually or we can use the plus sign to add the columns manually. Or thirdly, we can use sum and bracket, then write the first name of the box hyphen and the last name of the box to sum all these boxes together. Now, we can see that we have three rows. Similarly, we can have 20, 30 or any unlimited amount of rows that we want. So do we have to do different functions for every row? No, we don't because we are going to use shortcuts. Now, I would like to inform you about our magical shortcut using which we can do all this very easily. If we would want to copy this function and paste it here, then our answers won't match because we have marked here b5 and d5. And as we come down to this row, the names will change to b6, c6 and d6. So even if we copy and paste it here, then we have to change all these individually. So rather than doing that, what we are going to do is select this box. Then in the bottom right corner of this box, we can see a dot sign. When we click on this and while clicking, drag it down. Then we can see automatically the function has changed to b6 to d6 and then b7 to d7 and automatically the sums are also present here. So when we apply one function first, then we don't have to do all the process for the second one again. All we have to do is click on the dot in the bottom right corner and drag it downwards and then automatically all the correct values will be shown here. Now here we have calculated everything particularly that from each individual how much amount has been collected. Now the company wants to see the total collection of the three months. So let's write total. Here after selecting we can apply any formula as we want. We can use the plus method or we can write the box name like it is in here E5, then E6, E7. We can use the sum and plus method as well. So let's select here. Then we go to the top right corner and select auto sum and then press enter. Then we could get the total sale of the company very easily. In this way, we have seen our starting formula. The first formula that we used here in the process of using Excel can be very easily used for all the process that we need to do here. There is one more thing we need to notice by which we can do this more easily. That is, we have seen how to do equal here. Now what we want is that the whole sale that we have done, we want to know which one has the most number of sales, which means from whom we got the maximum collection from. So in that case, we have written previously equal and sum, but now we would write equal m a x. After writing m a x, we give the same bracket again and then from which field we want the maximum outcome that we will decide here first. So here we want the maximum outcome from the balance row first, which means between these three, which one has the highest number that we want to know. Let's say we have 20 clients within them who have given us the most collection or have given the highest balance that we would need to know. In that case, the box name would be Either we can write the name or after giving bracket if we select and uh, drag it, then we can see our names are already present here. Then we close it with the bracket and press enter. Now we can see automatically 1,90,000 is written here. Now if by any chance we have more sales or we did some mistakes, let's say we write 1,40 here and press enter, then we can see the effect entirely all over the functions. This means if we format our data table, automatically all the data will affect all over the functions. That's why if we do any kind of calculation in Excel, then we have to individually calculate each and every box. By using note and plus, we have to calculate each and everything. Now we will see how to calculate the minimum sale. We have calculated in this field the maximum number of sale. Now to calculate the minimum number of sale, first let's write here minimum, then press tab. Then we will write the function equal min 
bracket and then we drag and select the boxes. So let's drag and select, then bracket and enter. Then we can see that our minimum sale is 70,000. So it is visible under here and the maximum sale is present here. So in this way, we can use sum and equal functions and can get the maximum and minimum as well. Now in this field, we see that sometimes we need to provide discount for company sale, which means in some case we have to do a minus. So we have seen maximum, minimum and addition. Now let's learn how to do subtraction. For example, we have seen the total sale we got is 4,80,000. Now suppose we have given discount. Discount. Let's assume that we have given discount of 15,000. Now we need to get the final balance out here. So how can we do that? So now we can write is equal. We can use sum here or we can do it without sum by using functions. So sum bracket. We need to subtract from 480,000. Therefore our box name will be E8. So let's write here E8 minus. Now our 15,000 is in G8. So minus G8. Then bracket and enter. Then we can see that the 4,80,000 that was here, we have discounted 15,000 from that. Then our final company cash will be 4,65,000. All we have to do is in the place of plus, we have to put minus. So using this way, we can do many things like plus, minus, or we can even calculate minimum and maximum from anything. Earlier, we have seen the use of box selection and autofill function. There are even more interesting use of this autofill. For example, if we like to place the name of the months here, let's say we write January. After writing January, if we select here, after that we click this dot and drag it till here. Then we can see FEB February is here. March, April, everything will come here. We can see automatically all the month's name will appear without any label. This is Excel's own autofill function. If we write a name and drag, for example, if we write here Saturday, after writing Saturday, if we drag it downwards, then we can see that all the days in a week are automatically written in here. So using autofill, we can use a shortcut to write all the names of the months and weeks very easily. We can even use autofill to automatically write numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is the most easy way we can work with Excel. In the next video, we will learn how to frame a mark sheet, then how to calculate average, maximum or minimum number and the overall total process. In that video, we will also use a new function, the average function. And with that, we will make a mark sheet. For example, we will figure out how much we have got in a subject, on average basis, what is my total score and many more. So this is it for today and we will meet on the next video. Thank you for learning with Shikhan.com.